Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is pneumatic flow control methods. Our objective is to examine meter in and meter out flow control methods in pneumatic systems used to control the speed of pneumatic actuators. What seems to be a recurring theme in the pneumatics playlist, pneumatic systems are very similar to hydraulic systems in many aspects, yet notably different in others, principally because the power transfer medium of choice central to pneumatic systems, air, is compressible and occupies different volumes at different pressure and temperature conditions. This leads to pneumatic cylinders sometimes popping into place or moving at different speeds when subjected to different loads. Actuator speed control in pneumatic systems is therefore a somewhat difficult but not impossible task. Predictability is key. Given a constant load and constant input conditions, a technician should be able to dial in actuator speed to a reasonable degree of accuracy using flow control valves. Additionally, we'll examine more sophisticated systems making use of closed loop control and proportional valves in much later lectures. Today's lecture features the relatively primitive yet highly effective flow control valve with check valve bypass. As the title implies, a flow control valve with check valve bypass has two parts. One, a flow control valve, which is a manually adjustable restriction. Tightening the restriction reduces flow and reduces actuator speed. In contrast, opening up the restriction increases flow and increases actuator speed. The second part, the check valve bypass in parallel to the restriction orifice, determines in which direction flow is metered or controlled. In one direction, the check valve poppet is forced to the seat and forces flow through the restriction orifice. In the reverse direction, the check valve opens and allows unrestricted flow. Because flow control valves with check valve bypasses are orientation dependent, manufacturers often indicate direction of controlled flow using an arrow. Alternatively, one might see a big arrow pointing in the unrestricted direction and a small arrow pointing in the controlled direction. Install it in the wrong place and the wrong orientation and you'll get wrong results. Before we discuss meter in and meter out extension and retraction configurations, it might be helpful to quickly review how double acting cylinders extend and retract. Not all the time do you want cylinders extending and retracting with the speed of a Mike Tyson punch out, and sometimes it may be necessary to slow down one or both actions to meet the needs of an application. Extension is two simultaneous actions and necessitates two ports for a double acting cylinder. One, pressurized flow must enter and fill the cap end, and two, the rod end must be exhausted to the environment. Similarly, retraction is two simultaneous actions and necessitates two ports for a double acting cylinder. One, pressurized flow must enter and fill the rod end, and two, the cap end must be exhausted to the environment. This allows us two opportunities to control extension and two opportunities to control retraction. To control extension, we could restrict flow coming into the cap end. The slower the cap end fills up, the slower the cylinder will extend. This is known as meter in extension. Option two. Alternatively, we could restrict flow coming out of the rod end. The slower the rod end drains, the slower the cylinder will extend. This is known as meter out extension. The same things could be said about retraction. To control retraction, we could restrict flow coming into the rod end. The slower the rod end fills up, the slower the cylinder will retract. This is known as meter in retraction. Alternatively, we could restrict flow coming out of the cap end. The slower the cap end drains, the slower the cylinder will retract. This is known as meter out retraction. This yields four different methods of actuator speed control, meter in extension, meter out extension, meter in retraction, and meter out retraction. As easy as this general concept may be, the difficulty in implementing these four different methods is installing a flow control valve with check valve bypass in the proper location and the proper orientation. You'd be surprised how often people mess this up under stress. Here's my advice. Pay attention to the check valve since it is the single component that determines the restricted and unrestricted direction of flow. Let's examine all four methods starting with meter in extension. A meter in extension arrangement makes use of a flow control valve with check valve bypass installed in the cap end oriented in the following fashion. When flow enters the cap end, it forces the check valve poppet to the seat and all flow must travel through the narrow restriction orifice. Closing the orifice slows the extension speed down, opening up speeds it up. The check valve bypass allows the cylinder to retract at full speed. During retraction, air exhausted from the cap end pushes the check valve poppet off its seat 
such that flow is unimpeded. Here's an example of meter and extension. With the flow control valve relatively wide open, the cylinder darts out like the head of a hungry snapping turtle. Let's dial that down a bit. A couple turns in the flow control valve knob narrows the restriction orifice. The cylinder extends a little slower. A couple more turns in the flow control valve knob narrows the restriction orifice even more and the cylinder extends a little bit slower. If we close the flow control valve all the way, nothing reaches the cap end and the cylinder doesn't extend at all. Let's open it back up. After a bit of fiddling with this, a technician can dial extension speed into a desired range. You note retraction speed remained unaffected using a meter and extension configuration since the check valve bypass ensures air exhausted from the cap end during retraction is unimpeded. Additionally, you note I kept the load constant with this application. If I unloaded or increased the load, the pressure necessary to extend should change. Any change in pressure means compressible air occupies more or less volume. As a result, the cylinder would move slightly faster or slower. If, however, I loaded the cylinder back up to the previous specification, it should return to the previous extension speed. This is all one could reasonably hope for given this level of sophistication. Since subtle real-time variations in extension speed may have escaped your notice in the previous live action demonstration, here's a simulation in Automation Studio, making use of a handy plotting function for the numerically inclined. In this application, I'll be plotting rod displacement in inches as a function of time for a cylinder with a 10 inch rod. When I energize the solenoid with the flow control valve opened up to 0.03 inches in diameter, the rod reaches full extension in a matter of roughly 0.7 seconds. Note how steep the ramp up is since the rod is moving pretty fast. If I close the flow control valve restriction orifice down to 0.02 inches and again energize the solenoid, it takes about 1.5 seconds to reach full extension. Note how the ramp up is a little less steep than previously since the rod is moving a little slower. Also notice retraction time seems to be unaffected because the check valve bypass allows unrestricted flow in the opposite direction. If I further decrease the flow control valve restriction orifice down to a super tiny 0.01 inches and again energize the solenoid, it takes an agonizing six plus seconds to reach full extension. One could fiddle with the size of the restriction orifice to dial it to the desired speed. The plotting function in Automation Studio sure beats the dodgy feedback of standing there with an old school stopwatch. Let's now take a look at meter out extension. A meter out extension arrangement makes use of a flow control valve with check valve bypass installed on the rod end oriented in the following fashion. During extension, air exhausted from the rod end forces the check valve pop it to the seat and all flow must travel through the narrow restriction orifice. Closing the orifice backs up air in the rod end, thus slowing extension speed. As previously, the check valve bypass allows the cylinder to retract at full speed. During retraction, air entering the rod end pushes the check valve pop it off its seat such that flow is unimpeded. Here's an example of meter out extension. With the flow control valve relatively wide open, the cylinder again darts out with a bang. Let's dial that back. A couple more turns in the flow control valve knob narrows the restriction orifice even more the cylinder extends a little bit slower. All right, here's a question that really highlights some of the variances between hydraulic and pneumatic systems. What would happen if I close the flow control valve all the way in a meter out extension configuration such that no air could leave the rod end? Would the cylinder move at all? Think about it. I'll give you till a count of five to come up with an answer. One, five. Did you see that? The cylinder partially extended even though the completely closed flow control valve on the rod end won't let any air escape. Why did it partially extend? I'll tell you why. Air is compressible. As pressurized flow enters the cap end, it compresses the air trapped at the rod end into a smaller volume and the cylinder partially extends. Like I said earlier, pneumatic systems exhibit noticeable differences between almost identically configured hydraulic systems. Let's open it back up. After a bit of fiddling with this, a technician could dial extension speed into a desired range. As previously, you'll note retraction speed remained unaffected using a meter out extension configuration since the check valve bypass ensures air entering the rod end during retraction is unimpeded. Let's now take a look at meter in retraction. A meter in retraction arrangement makes use of a flow control valve with check valve bypass installed on the rod end oriented in the following fashion. When flow enters the rod end, it forces the check valve poppet to the seat and all flow must travel through the narrow restriction orifice. Closing the orifice slows the retraction speed. 
The check valve bypass allows the cylinder to extend at full speed. During extension, air exhausted from the rod end pushes the check valve poppet off its seat such that flow is unimpeded. Here's an example of meter in retraction. With the flow control valve relatively wide open, the cylinder jumps back like a frightened coyote into its guarida. Let's dial that down a bit. A couple turns on the flow control valve knob narrows the restriction orifice and reduces flow entering the rod end. The cylinder retracts a little slower. A couple more turns in the flow control valve knob narrows the restriction orifice even more and the cylinder retracts a little bit slower. All the way closed. If we close the flow control valve all the way, nothing reaches the rod end and the cylinder doesn't retract at all. Let's open it back up. After a bit of fiddling with this, a technician could dial retraction speed into a desired range. You know that extension speed remained unaffected using a meter in retraction configuration since the check valve bypass ensures air exhausted from the rod end during extension is unimpeded. Finally, let's take a look at meter out retraction. A meter out retraction arrangement makes use of a flow control valve with check valve bypass installed in the cap end oriented in the following fashion. During retraction, air exhausted from the cap end forces the check valve poppet to the seat and all flow must travel through the narrow restriction orifice. Closing the orifice backs up air in the cap end, thus slowing retraction speed. As previously, the check valve bypass allows the cylinder to extend at full speed. During extension, air entering the cap end push the check valve pop it off its seat so that flow is unimpeded. Here's an example of the meter out retraction configuration. With the flow control valve relatively wide open, the cylinder slams back. Let's dial that down a bit. A couple more turns in the flow control valve knob narrows the restriction orifice even more and the cylinder retracts a little bit slower. After a bit of fiddling with this, the technician could dial retraction speed into a desired range. As previously, you'll note extension speed remained unaffected during a meter out retraction configuration since the check valve bypass ensures air entering the cap end during the extension is unimpeded.